Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August the 12th, 2023. Let's talk about Anthony Joshua's victory over Robert Hellenius. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, and I know this is not the tone of the telecast that I just saw on the zone, right? I understand people wanted Joshua to just run in there and be reckless, but I'm very serious when I say this is the best version of Anthony Joshua that I've seen. I thought he looked very good. Let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the few areas that Joshua can work on and improve, right? But just understand, I thought we're few and far between. I thought this version of Anthony Joshua is a threat to the title. That includes Tyson Fury. The three areas that I thought uh, might need a little tightening up is he did get hit a bit with Robert Hellenius's jab, which was able to split his defense, right? You know what I think. I think fighters need to vary their defense, need to sometimes cross their hands, right? Need to sometimes have it where they are prepared to lean back. Here, Joshua had rabbit ear type defense, and got hit with a few jabs, um, his eyes started to puff up a little bit, right? So probably want to tighten that up a little bit. Let me say this too. Joshua vastly improved, has a vertical game going, has his defense in line, is moving after throwing punches. He's much harder to find in the ring now. But if someone were to criticize the movement, while Joshua was moving in and out well, in other words, he liked to be on the rim of the pocket. Then he would come inside and move inside. Then he'd move back as Hellenius would throw some shots, right? What I didn't see was a lot of lateral movement from Joshua. Instead of moving north to south, he might want to mix in, moving left to right. It matters because he's about to face Deontay Wilder. You want to keep Wilder guessing on where you're going to be. Right? One final concern that Joshua can look at the film himself and see is that he was allowing himself to be clinched by a KG vet, that's who Hellenius is, um, at the the wrong times. So this fight could have ended earlier. Joshua throws a right hand, Hellenius moves out of the way, then Joshua throws a left, and understand, Joshua is blessed with punching power in both hands, right? The difference between him and Hellenius is Hellenius's right is much greater than the other punches Hellenius throws. Joshua is blessed. To me, his best punch might be his lead left hook, right? Didn't really throw it that much this fight. I'm just telling you there's a lot to Joshua that wasn't shown in this fight. But there's a sequence where Hellenius is on the ropes. Joshua comes in with the right hand that Hellenius dodges. Then Joshua hits him with a picture-perfect left hand. Right? The telecast doesn't do it justice. It's a picture-perfect left hand that catches Hellenius right on the face. And Hellenius is stunned by it. The problem is Josh was a little bit too open at that moment. So Hellenius, being the vet he is, doesn't try to swing wildly at Joshua to try to hit him back immediately. No, Hellenius leans forward and clinches Joshua. Now, had Joshua been prepared for the clinch, had Joshua, after hitting him with the left hand, 
just had an arm bar so that as Hellenius moves forward, Joshua has something to kind of push Hellenius off of him. I believe Hellenius was so badly hurt that Joshua might have closed the show that round. Let's talk about the actual knockdown. Let's talk about what Hellenius does wrong. Hellenius is tired after six. Understand, Joshua's in magnificent shape. Right, Hellenius is much more tired than Joshua is. I know Hellenius took this fight on a few days' notice, but understand that Hellenius had been through a camp and had just won a fight by knockout. So Hellenius should have been in better shape than he was. Well, Hellenius is over by the ropes, right? He's tired. He's trying to take a breather. This version of Anthony Joshua does not allow you to take breathers. So Joshua is right in front of him. It's actually really well done. So Joshua comes after Hellenius, and Joshua is low down, right? And it matters. Hellenius is a tall guy, but understand, Deontay Wilder is a tall guy. Joshua is telegraphing that he's going to fight small, and he's able to now. He's going to fight small against taller guys. Understand, Tyson Fury is a tall guy. Right, so Joshua, who's athletic, is letting you know, hey, look, I'm not going to be standing outside against tall guys. I'm going to come in low like he does in the final sequence here. Now, Hellenius, who had been having success with the jab, falls for what Joshua's doing. What Hellenius should have done is realize, uh-oh, I'm exposed here. Right? Here's hard-hitting Anthony Joshua. He's coming in low. I'm up against the ropes. I need to take my left hand and I need to cover up. I need to anticipate that Joshua's going to throw either a left hook or a straight right. So I need to have a hand up here. I need to start rolling away from whatever he's going to throw. Instead, Hellenius caught up in the moment, given a split second to think, right? Not more. He has to make a decision immediately. He tries to throw a straight left on Joshua. He tries to hit Joshua like he's been hitting Joshua with that left jab. Hellenius is right-handed. And you know what happens. Joshua is able to dodge the punch. This is this version of Joshua. He comes in low and he's moving his head, folks. He dodges the punch, then has a clean, straight right hand on Hellenius. He lands it. That's the fight. Right? Hellenius should never have thrown that last left. Because think about the odds. You miss the punch on Joshua, and this is a new Anthony Joshua with more head movement, more of a vertical game, who's rolling as you're throwing punches. You miss the punch on Joshua, he has a free shot on you. And Joshua's gifted with both hands. Right? So I thought, I thought Joshua did a great job what stymied him was the fact that Hellenius was smart and would not overcommit, right? Joshua wanted to be a counterpuncher here. Joshua was cautious by nature to begin with. You understand, Joshua, the first couple of rounds, is going to try to feel out the lay of the land, right? But I noticed even when Hellenius is landing his jab, Hellenius did not try to overcommit in the pocket. Hellenius wanted Joshua to come to him. Both of these guys wanted the other to come to them. They didn't want to recklessly come forward and overcommit and then find themselves in the pocket against a puncher. Right? So both of these guys are trying to fight at range. 
Hellenius had moments in the fifth where even his corner got excited, right? He's landing that jab. He's coming forward, but he's measured. I believe their idea was, hey, we're chopping down a tree here, right? Hit Joshua with the jab, stand him up, have him where you want him, then extend the right hand. It wasn't to run up to Joshua, even though Hellenius tries that in the opening moments of the fight. Right? The Joshua game plan was to look for clean counters and to show better defensive skills than Joshua has had up until now. So you'll notice Joshua is not standing as upright as he normally does. You'll notice Joshua is bending his knees a bit more. Right, as I said, he's trying to play a vertical game against a tall fighter. Right, one of the problems with boxing is when you're as tall as Joshua, most of the time you're the taller man in the ring. Well, here, Joshua, understanding that the heavyweight division has gotten tall. Look at the heights of people like Ergovic, for example. Right? Big baby. All of these guys are around 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and taller. Right? So now we have Joshua saying, hey, I'm more athletic than most of the division. He had a hand speed advantage on Hellenius, for example. Right? And it was profound. So now Joshua's saying, okay, great. I'm going to box with you a little bit, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to be a little bit lower than I normally am. And I'm going to do things like when I throw a left, I'm going to move as I'm throwing it. Right? When I come inside, I'm going to be prepared to move my head. So you get the last sequence where he comes inside, he moves his head, dodges the punch, has his own clear shot. Joshua's defense is much improved. Joshua's moving. He's not sticking around like he was in the Andy Ruiz fight in the pocket. So Ruiz, a combination puncher, was able to start hitting him. No, Joshua's making certain that he doesn't spend that much time in the pocket. That he's outside, then he's inside, throw some punches, then he backs out. Right? I'm just telling you, this version of Anthony Joshua is the best version I've seen. You'll notice after he lands that left hand on Hellenius, Hellenius's nose starts bleeding. You'll notice Joshua's jab is still stiff, right? But Joshua is hiding his game. I didn't see the big time left hooks that are all over the film of the round in which he knocks down Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, Klitschko gets up woozy. What punch does Joshua go for to end that fight? What punch did he consider his best fight, uh, his best punch? That was his lead left hook. You didn't see that many of them here. Right? Rather, Joshua is trying to box and be strategic and find ways to land his right hand as a counter. Right, folks? Let's just say he looked technical today. He looked scientific today. While he wasn't openly aggressive, understand at the end of six rounds, he has Hellenius tired in a fight that's close, but in which Joshua likely has won at least three of the rounds. In other words, he's not giving away the early rounds. He's actually fighting and engaged. Going into the second half of the fight, it looked like he had more stamina than Hellenius. He certainly had the hand speed on Hellenius. And of course, he had the better left hand than Hellenius, right? Hellenius can match him in terms of right hand, but let's just say Joshua, again, is a gifted puncher with both hands. Very impressive performance. I like the last sequence. I get the feeling as Joshua becomes more uh, familiar with Derek James, 
who was telling him to throw the right hand to Hellenius's chest, right? Joshua was cautious, engaging distance. I'm guessing there's going to come a time where Joshua's going to throw that right hand to an opponent's chest when the opponent is hiding his head and leaning back as much as Hellenius was, right? I give Joshua's performance an A. I thought he looked really good, right? I think when he himself looks on the film, he's going to realize that a little bit of lateral movement wouldn't hurt him. He's going to realize that if he can find a way to avoid being clinched in key moments, like when he hits Hellenius with an excellent left hand and Hellenius is already leaning on the ropes, if Joshua in those moments can find a way to just turn his body a little bit, make it so that, you know, the guy can't clinch him, even throw a right hand and get low. This version of Joshua doesn't throw punches and think about and forget about what's coming back. This version's throwing punches and thinking about what's coming back. If Joshua in that moment could have just thrown a right hand just to have something between himself and Hellenius, throw it to the body to prevent Hellenius from coming forward and clinching him, I believe Joshua could have ended the fight in that round. Right? Look at Hellenius's bleeding nose after Joshua lands a punch that lands right on it. Anyway, that's the fight I saw. Let me hear from you. Obviously, well, put it this way. Joshua won by knockout. The most likely scenario for this fight, as we said in the pre-fight. Um, you know, you were hedged up. Obviously, I would have preferred the underdog to get the knockout. Anytime you see Robert Hellenius going off, at a greater than plus 900. In fact, at tip-off here on the zone, they showed you that Fan Kings had um, him going off at something like a plus 750. Anytime you see Hellenius going off at those odds, he's the betting side of the play. He was extremely cagey. He landed his own jabs on Anthony Joshua. He threw some home run punches that didn't land, had one of them landed. This fight could have been different in his favor, right? KG vets with power should never be going off at odds as long as Hellenius went off here. In any event, the hedge of the fight not going the distance held. Understand, folks, this fight ended in something like the seventh round. <laughs> It wasn't close to going the distance. Two heavy punching guys like this, it's not going to go the distance. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.